namaste everyone uh, today we would be discussing about protocolized glycemic control in an intensive care unit and uh, at the outset let me thank uh, indian society of critical care medicine for giving me this opportunity and i would also like to thank my teachers and my students uh, for whatever the things they taught me in my life and uh, so let us go into the concept so before we go into any concept you need to understand these questions of why when and what so why is this glycemic management so important and what should be your target values what are the challenges in achieving these targets and what are the measures you should be implementing to deal with these challenges so how do you go history begets history so you always need to understand the history behind the anything so we'll be going into the brief history learn new concepts of variability indexes and time in the target range and how to go for a personalized protocolized glycemic control so at the outset what are the definitions of hyperglycemia hyperglycemia could be a stress induced hyperglycemia or a diabetic who has a new onset uh, high sugars so if your uh, hb1c is less than 6.5% and uh, this elevated blood glucose levels as evidenced by fasting blood sugar of more than 126 or random blood sugar of more than 200 it is called as stress induced hyperglycemia whereas uh, if your hb1c is more than 6.5 it indicates that you have a previous history of diabetes and hypoglycemia could be less than 70 mg per deciliter and it is severe when you have the sugars are less than 40 and uh, so why does the hyperglycemia occur in an icu or in a hospital setting so you have a lot of factors you have medications like glucocorticoids external dextrose vasopressors like catecholamines and lot of inflammatory mediators and you have a parenteral nutrition or enteral nutrition which can cause this and uh, the stress on the body can cause high glycogenolysis and increase the glucose output from the liver protein breakdown all of them culminate into giving a high blood sugars and which is in turn detrimental in causing dyselectrolytemias hypovolemia acid based disturbances and at the tissue level it creates a lot of disturbances like endothelial dysfunction immune dysregulation and uh, superoxide generation so ultimately it culminates in organ failure and bad outcomes so how does the critical illness affect this critical illness uh, you need to for this one you need to understand what is disposition index disposition index is nothing but a multiplication factor of your sensitivity of insulin for the body and the production capacity of insulin corresponding to the blood sugar values by the pancreas so as the disposition index comes down your vulnerability to tolerate the glycemia high glycemic sugars uh, gets down and uh, in critical illness there is a decreased first phase response of the insulin so this creates a, a heavier of the glycemic control so what are the prevalence of hyperglycemia in critical ill patients uh, as you can see in this slide uh, by in a good study published in intensive care medicine critical illness induced hyperglycemia is up to 50% and uh, another up to 22% uh, already recognized diabetes can cause high sugars and uh, unrecognized diabetes or de novo diabetes can cause high sugars in up to 5.5% and uh, is it important definitely it causes huge mortality uh, huge effect on the mortality so for uh, incremental response for every blood sugar value more than 200 uh, mg per deciliter there is a three fold increase and up to four fold increase of mortality if your sugars go above 300 mg per deciliter and uh, when you compare with an icu and non icu setting definitely the high sugar values uh, occurring in an icu patient causes uh, high mortality risk and uh, going into a brief history of studies fernery uh, et al in 1999 and further studies in 2003 he has demonstrated that well controlled uh, glycemia in an icu patient decreases your infection up to 65% and mortality up to 57% whereas further in uh, vandenberg uh, trials or leuven trials in surgical icu patients it has showed a significant benefit in the mortality up to 42% so even it has shown that there decrease incidence of arrhythmias with the tight glycemic control so coming to the benefit of tight glycemia versus liberal glycemia control uh, tight glycemia basically indicates that your sugar should be less than 110 up to 81 to 110 in majority of the studies 
whereas liberal control allows you to go up to the 180 mg per dl not more than 180 mg per dl but up to it so when you compare with a lot of uh, studies so basically the meta analysis shows that intensive insulin therapy in critically ill patients it doesn't have any significant mortality benefit but it can cause increased risk of hypoglycemia but in a subgroup of surgical patients trauma patients and neuro intensive care patients you may find a benefit of right glycemic control so again going into the details of nice sugar study which you cannot uh, leave when you are discussing about glycemic control so this again shows uh, the same thing after this study done in 6104 patients which is a wonderful study it has drawn a line about the idea about the glycemic control it has showed that uh, tight very intensive glycemic control should not be encouraged and you should keep a target of 140 to 180 mg per dl once your iv insulin has started and what are the present uh, well approved glycemic or targets for critically ill patients uh, your starting threshold of insulin should not be more than 180 once it is started your acceptable range is 140 to 180 but in selected categories as we discussed it could be allowed up to 110 to 140 so these are various trials as you go from top to bottom uh, the first luven trial it has showed both the mortality benefit and lot of uh, decreased incident about the infection rate renal failure incident and all which was not substantiated in the further studies most predominantly by the nice sugar uh, trial done in 2009 it has showed that there is uh, no mortality benefit but on the contrary it has showed that there is an increased mortality a 90 day mortality in intensive glycemic insulin therapy so and uh, it has shown lot of uh, hypoglycemic events so from then the there was a discouragement about the intensive tight insulin control so you know that the hyperglycemia is uh, bad for the body and other side hypoglycemia itself is hugely detrimental to the body so this is a pictorial representation of uh, scylla and charybdis when the ulysses in greek history is negotiating between both of them so on both sides of the ship there is a monster how do you go ahead with it to understand this you need to understand the concepts of monitoring you have a static monitoring where the point of uh, care measurement of uh, sugars by capillary glucose or blood glucose whereas you have a dynamic monitoring so for this one the newer concepts are more relevant concepts are time into the target range this is nothing but the period of time during which the blood glucose levels remain within acceptable range so it has shown to be significantly associated with and are correlates with the mortality and morbidity of the patients and uh, this is again a show diagram showing you the brown color one is showing that the, it, the this is the range where uh, the patient sugar should be and uh, as again said the variability or the dynamic index it is not the absolute value but the fluctuations in the sugar as denoted by the various indices like glycemic variability coefficient of variation glycemic liability index these all indicate the fluctuation in the sugars which again is a strong predictor of ic mortality rather than a mean glucose concentration so the reason being the more the fluctuations are more the variability is it causes oxidative stress increased endothelial dysfunction and enhanced sl apoptosis and it can be harm in a critically ill patients glycemic liability index again it predicts your infection risk and mortality risk these are various other measures to understand the glycemic variability we need not go into the deeper uh, concepts of this one and uh, again the uh, basic uh, understanding is that uh, you need to prevent the fluctuations in the sugars so when you understand the glycemic control of a patient or in an icu or in hospital at a hospital level you can uh, have it is this concept is called glucometrics where you can have total patients recording fed into the uh, computer it can understand various uh, uh, hypoglycemic episodes results of total patients uh, when you go into the personalized glycemic control so is each patient different from the other patient definitely apples are different from oranges so for this one you need to understand these concepts diabetic paradox so where you know you have a poorly controlled uh, diabetic patients they tend to tolerate the fluctuations in the sugars better when you have a new diabetic or a tightly controlled diabetic or non diabetic patients this is called as diabetes paradox so they can indicates the pre morbid diabetic status impacts your uh, glycemic control or the variations which you can tolerate so this is called as the concept of relative hypoglycemia it is not the absolute value 
but it is the relative relative hypoglycemia compared with your baseline so you need to have a chronic baseline or acute baseline to understand the drop in the sugars so hba1c does it correlate so definitely every patient from now i think you need to you need to get a value of hba1c at an admission so it it gives you a uh, background of the control of the sugars so for non diabetics and diabetic patients with hba1c less than 7% you need to aim for a tight control may be 140 to 200 whereas you should aim for a higher control of 160 to 220 for a diabetic with hba1c of more than 7% they tend to tolerate these sugars better uh, another personalized uh, glycemic control occurs in neuro intensive care patients where these patients it was showed in a multiple subgroup analysis that and in multiple studies that the tight control of the sugars between 8 to 1 80 to 110 Uh, it appears to decrease the icp de- uh, decrease the complications of the patient but again if you compare with the initial period and the later period initial period try to keep a liberal control whereas in a later period of traumatic brain injury patients try to keep a stricter control so dynamic control of the glucose monitoring a dynamic glycemic control comes in understanding with continuous glucose monitoring it is nothing but uh, instead of intermittently checking the sugars you will have some measuring site some catheter which continuously monitor your glucose uh, first cgm was started in us in 2005 it is predominantly investigated in uh, ambulatory patients but it still is being investigated and uh, needs to mount evidence in the icu care settings so the perfect cgm would be a rapid one accurate one and free of interferences of biochemical or with any bacteria or membranes but in the sensor needs to be in it it needs to be robust there should not be invasiveness but as you know there is nothing perfect in the life so you need to get a compromise somewhere and the problems uh, being uh, sensor drift that the sensor gets blunted over time because of biofilm there will be a measurement lag uh, because of the interstitial fluid and the uh, plasma glucose and there would be infection risk and coagulations there are these are various types of continuous glucose monitoring available uh, these the first four are uh, approved by the fda the latter are still to be approved there will be a lag time of approximately 7 to 15 minutes uh, from the initial measurement until you are recording uh, the problem being the implant period the last only for days maybe at the max up to 7 days in case of dexcom so you need to change it and it tends to get costly and invasive uh, concept of artificial pancreas as we discussed about the disposition index in critical illness uh, the artificial pancreas system or the closed loop system try to mimic the inherent uh, pancreas where the body uh, the system tries to recognize your continuous glucose monitoring values try to generate your uh, try to generate the uh, glucose insulin uh, delivery based on your continuous glucose uh, release so the essential requirements being uh, continuous monitoring and high frequency monitoring continuous iv infusion and uh, this is a scale uh, skyline diagram showing the same thing where you use a continuous glucose monitor generates in con- glucose control algorithm initiated infusion pump and this is again the same pictorial depiction where the sister contributes to the decision support system you can have a static control or dynamic control these are various types of dynamic control uh, coming to the end of the monitoring aspect what does the future hold in the glycemic monitoring uh, in the future you tend to see more and more of less invasive and uh, more continuous monitoring devices like wearable wireless biosensors uh, which are uh, which can be wore on your skin and these are various types of uh, glucose monitoring devices which are external you can have an eye glass contact lenses skin mounted sensors bands on the wrist and arm epidermal tattoos or even the glucose can be mounted on the saliva and these can be directly transmitted to the wifi at your home or at your doctor and which will give you a real time feedback but it cannot be at this point of time it cannot be applied in the critical illness patients because of various barriers like uh, you cannot predict the transdermal delivery you cannot understand the hypoperfusion impact on the uh, sugar monitoring and other other types of uh, non invasive monitors are the newer devices or you can have a fisa a flexible integrated sensor array and you can even have a kind of uh, lactate sensor which can directly connect to your comp- uh, this uh, mobile mounted this one you can see the trends continuously so this is what the world glucose monitoring at this point of time 
and coming to the take home message we'll review the first initial questions is the glycemic management important definitely it is important which is carries a huge mortality and mor morbidity both the low sugars and high sugars what should be your target values try to keep a target values personalized to your patients rather than on a broader uh, guidelines but try to avoid sugars going up more than 180 but try to avoid uh, keeping too tighter control but if you have a setting of neuro intensive care or kind of surgical patients try to understand your patient better and try to personalize your goals in a diabetic poor control diabetic versus non diabetics and uh, what is the treasure here the treasure is achieving a proper glycemic control have you achieved it uh, we haven't achieved it yet but uh, the more and more that research happens the more and more we are nearing the treasure and uh, the take home message is try to understand the dynamic indices like glycemic variability or time spent in uh, therapeutic range and uh, personalized the concept is personalized protocolized glycemic control rather than uh, stubborn thought of keeping a tight protocols in your icu and uh, let me thank the indian society of critical care medicine again and all my teachers and I, as i always say out you can treat a disease you may win or you lose but if you always treat a person i guarantee you you will win no matter what the outcome is thank you very much and all the best